Dylan, we've been dealing with these frigid temperatures all week long, but starting to warm up a little Finally bit. Finally starting to warm up. We can melt a lot of the snow out in the Buffalo and Watertown area. And actually, an interesting note from the National Weather Service out that way, they say they typically don't get a lot of bad flooding from snow melt. So with the warmer temperatures and the melting snow, hopefully that'll just ease the situation. We are looking for high temperatures to get about 10 to 15 degrees above average. Kansas City is back up to 50 today. Chicago's up to 41. Buffalo, 39 degrees. We get even warmer tomorrow, 46. In Buffalo, St. Louis close to 60, Nashville right at 60, Atlanta 64 degrees. And as we continue through the week, Chicago will stay in the lower 40s. Buffalo hits 50 on Friday, then staying in the mid to upper 40s for Saturday and Sunday. Cincinnati's back into the mid 50s. Even New York, we should be around 50 to 55 degrees. It does come with some rain, though, especially for the end of the week. On Saturday, we could see more rain fall across the eastern Great Lakes down into the southeast, above average through the middle of the country, and heavy rain with the next storm moving into the west coast a flooding threat possible all the way down in the Southern California by midnight uh, as we ring in 2023. Rain in the Northeast and a little bit of light snow across the upper Midwest. That's a look at the weather across the country. We'll get to your local forecast in the next 30 seconds. Cast, hey Dylan, what you watching? Good morning. We're watching a lot of activity on the West Coast. Let's just take you through the parade of storms that we're going to see over the next several days. Today, we have one moving through. We're going to see the heavy rain move into the Southwest through this morning. And then if we go a little farther to the West, you'll see where the next line of storms are setting up. This is the storm that's going to affect uh, parts of California and the West Coast tomorrow. Here's the one for Friday. Here's the one on Saturday down through there. And then we also have one all the way out near Tokyo right now. And that's going to be the one that's going to impact the West Coast on Monday. So I'd say the Friday Saturday storm is going to bring the one is going to be the one that brings the most rain and the most snow to the one that's moving through Arizona right now will continue to move to the east. So through Friday, we're going to see a, a lot of rain about three to five inches of rain, especially down across uh, northern and central California. As for snow, 36 inches likely in the higher elevations. Luckily, that's mostly ski resorts, so good news for that area. That's a look at the weather across the country. The hill was initially uh, released. I feel like we've talked about that song so many times yeah, on Pop Start. But now the earworm is back in my head. I know. So, yeah. so here we go that. again. Yeah. I love Stranger Things. I'm not caught up, though. That's inspiring me. Well, we got something to do after yeah. the show. Uh, coming up. Forward, you know, it's, it's so nice to see you on that oh, show. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Dylan Dreyer with the classics. <laughs> with the classics always. <laughs> On the beach, what's your verdict? It's all about the beach scene. <laughs> Three hours is a little yes. bit much, but I don't know. Who gets tired of a beach scene? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, the secret side of Kristen Welker, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, cool is that? Yeah, Inspiring another him. generation of bad bunnies right there. Yeah, exactly. Spirit of <laughs> the holidays. Yeah. 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 That's your pop start. Jacob, appreciate it. Still ahead right here. <clears throat> Excuse me, two delicious New Year's. Back now with the story of one doctor's fight against Alzheimer's in an unexpected place. According to the Alzheimer's Foundation, one very small Texas border town has the highest incidences of the disease mm. of anywhere in the nation. NBC's Richard Louie traveled to Rio Grande City to find out what's happening and meet the doctor leading the charge in his hometown. So the research program began just a few weeks ago. The El Faro Clinic says they saw a huge uptick in people who wanted to take part after our story first aired back in September. Oh, that's so fantastic. good. That's fantastic. All right, still to come on this Wellness Wednesday. The, it's time for those resolutions. And for some, it could be the perfect time to focus on yourself and find some inner zen. So one way to do that, a sound bath. I tried it out earlier this year for the first time, and this method of deep relaxation had a profound impact on me. So it's called the Ohm Center, mm. and it's still offering sound baths and private groups. So you can do it by yourself, yeah. or you can be with a large group. Some people like to be in a group. I mean, you look like you were pretty comfortable. I in allowed house. myself to go somewhere, I don't know. But then she won't let you sleep. Like they say, don't mm. fall asleep, but be. It's hard to do, though. It but is. You kind of go into a different state of, it was great. of rest. It was a beautiful really experience. Cool. All right, coming up, horses. Hey, we're going to share the story of a, a very special ranch that's introducing a whole new farm world to kids from underserved communities. And it's a mission that sprang from one of the most powerful moments in our nation's history. The horses at the ranch, by the way, they often take their own field trips to the city for community events. And Brianna says that the plan is to keep expanding the nonprofit programs to advocacy groups, therapy and mental health providers, and schools for the arts. That's great. I know, it's so good. All right, turning now to another one of our series, On the Job. And today, it's bringing us to one of the world's busiest airports, Atlanta's Hartsfield 
Jackson International. NBC's Savannah Sellers got to meet a very special team of federal agents that are keeping us safe. So most of these adorable little beagles, they serve about nine years and then they retire. The USDA says they are almost always adopted by their CBP oh, officer. That's nice. And when that doesn't happen, there's usually someone else who's fallen in love and will adopt them instead. That's, that's great. Sweet. That's I wonder what they do in retirement. It's it just exactly uh, it's what we all would want to do, I guess. Coming up in our <laughs> She Made It. I'm back now with a She Made It story of a well-known beauty mogul who, I mean, really started from nothing. Yeah, Maureen Kelly had no cosmetics experience, no business experience. She maxed out her credit cards and even had to employ friends to help package products by paying them in pizza. Seriously. But in the end, the driving force behind all of her success was herself. So here's another cool part about this. Maureen is now paying it forward through her Heart to Tarp from Nonprofit, which ran a Tart Loves Teachers campaign this fall to try to get supplies yeah. uh, for teachers in classrooms. Maureen says, after our story, that effort went viral. So thanks to all of you who watched it the first time and decided to chip in. And Maureen says she's launching a juicy new foundation in this new mm -hmm. year. So stay tuned. I for do that. love yeah. her products. Yeah, I mean, I use stuff. the concealer, the all lipstick, the, things. the eyeshadow. Yeah. I love it. Um, Same here, girl. Same here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, up next in... We are back with our series, Food for Thought, and a look at a part of Asian culture that's on the rise here in the U.S. Yeah, night markets are all about fun, friends, and most importantly, food, and they're popping up in cities everywhere, New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Portland, but the biggest one is in Los Angeles, and our pal Jacob Sobroff recently took... Uh -huh. So after, after Jacob's story first aired, mm -hmm. the general manager told us, Everyone oh, yeah. wanted to know when the next night market was and where vendors could get a booth. That's so cool. for anyone who's wondering, the next Mega 626 night markets are going to start up again in the summer in both northern and southern California locations. We do a lot of good on this show. <laughs> like you are removing the needle. Yeah, we'll be right back with more good. Well, that's going to do it for us on this Wednesday. Coming up tomorrow in the third hour, a look at the future of construction with 3D printed homes. Mm. Hoda and Jenna is coming up next. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.